I, I think the timing of this, Kieran, is absolutely curious. Like, it's really, really weird here. Here they are trying to take over company uh, uh, customers from Ulster Bank and KBC, and at the same time, they're saying to two cohorts of customers, "We really, really don't want you," uh, and that they are SMEs who rely on coins and cash for late night businesses like pubs and restaurants and bars and other things, uh, and over 65s. Now, over 65s, it seems to me, are a completely dispensable customer to AIB. They don't want them. They have money, cash on deposit, they don't want that. They don't pay bank fees, so they're a loss. Mm. Uh, they don't want them going into branches. And, and this is going to hugely affect people like my mum, who I spent the last two months, she's nearly 85, transferring her from Ulster Bank to AIB to a branch she specifically chose because it is a branch. She wants to be able now, to I'm sure AIB it. would say that should she go in in the future into this cashless branch, there will be people there to assist her doing everything but digitally. Hold on. I don't think it's their well, official policy to chase away to everyone by the over way, 65. Sorry, Mum, if you're listening, sorry, Mum, I have to tell you, your branch is on the list. So from here on in, they don't want you as a customer. It means that I now have to go with her. She's not going to go online. She's not going to be digitalised in a hub somewhere and she doesn't want a stranger doing her business with her. So they don't want her yet she wants a branch. Now, that is not on. Now, are AIB a social service? No, they're not. But what they're effectively saying to my mum and all of the other older people out there is shag off and use the post office. And I don't think that's fair when we own most of that bank still. Uh, Nat, I assume you would be in full agreement with much of what <laughs> Sinead has just said. Well, largely, absolutely. I mean, cash matters to a lot of people. And you'll have some older people who are using the internet who are quite happy with online banking, but you'll have many who are not. And we know from the Department of Finance's own surveys that more than half of older people are going into their branch at least once a month, if not more regularly. Many people are paying their bills in the bank. And of course, having the cash lets you manage your life. So if you're not, not using the internet, you can't check your balance online. You can't necessarily manage your affairs through tapping or through having everything, you know, cashless. People like to have the ability to get their cash. And of course, if the branch goes cashless, it means there's no ATM. So if you do find an ATM, it might be a private one, you're paying extra fees out of your pension every week just to get access to your, your pension, modest enough as it is. So it's a real important thing for many, many people that they have access to cash so they can go about their lives. And these are often loyal customers mm. for 50, 60 years who are now told, well, you know, we've made the profit out of you and now we're not going to provide you with the service for the, you know, for the remainder of your life. And that's just, it's very unfair to many people. And, and we know because uh, there's been much coverage of it on this show and elsewhere, uh, that I suppose an option for them is to switch banks. Switching banks is not easy as well. And it's often very hard to do that with a person. You're expected to do much of it where? Online. Well, absolutely. And if you're not online, and we know that, you know, certainly at least half of older persons are not, you know, they don't have the skills to be online to do this level of online activity, then what are they meant to do? And not everybody has children, and certainly many people don't want to be relying on other people. They want to be independent, living their lives, and they, they don't want to have to rely on someone else to help them out. And of course, on the hard edge of that, there's a risk of fraud, there's a risk of abuse if people are having to share their private information with other people. So that's, that's a real concern. And Neve, the uh, pillar banks, they really treat us like fools, don't they? I mean, they close branches to suit themselves, they charge us the highest interest rates in Europe, they make it incredibly difficult to switch bank when people are forced to switch bank. Mm -hmm. And now this. Mm, well, I have to say, uh, somebody who had asked me to help them to do that very job of who, you know, to open an account in AIB. We went in uh, into an AIB not too far from where I am, and we were told we'd have six, eight, to wait six or eight weeks to actually get an appointment to sit down and open an account. And we did go across the road to another bank, and it wasn't the case. They were able to do it within a couple of days. But like in my own constituency of Castle where I have an office and there is a hive of activity on the main street. There's lots of farmers living in the local area. There's lots of older people in the local area. The demographic is really mixed. It is really irreprehensible to do such a thing because they've already lost um, Bank of Ireland in, in Castle Blaine. The only ATM left in the town uh, is AIB. And we're actually down to now credit unions and post offices. That's what we're down to. Mm. Carrot Cross is the same. It's mm. another of these uh, 70 banks that's going to be cashless. And again, it's, it's a bank I, I, I go into quite a lot myself. It's in the centre of the town. Very nice staff there. But there's always been uh, this kind of 
uh, intent to, to push people onto machines and you know get them to be online and to use the apps. But absolutely, there's a mm -hmm. whole generation of people that will never do that and don't trust that. And it really feeds into this mistrust that there is already there around the pillar banks yeah. and around banks that, that really push people out of their front door. And Martin, unconscious to be people yeah. listening to this who uh, think, well, for them, that they still have a post office in the couple of places that, that Niamh mentioned because others won't even have that option. Yeah, there's there's a lot of people out there that are, are, are really in, in trouble today. Small businesses particularly, you yeah. know, as mentioned earlier on, you know, an awful lot of small businesses, pubs, restaurants, shops, they, they used to go on a particular morning, get all their, their, their coin, do all of that. Now that's been pushed maybe another 10 or 15 miles away further for them to do it. And the, when they go to those other branches now, that means that the amount of, of people that are coming to get that service has doubled or tripled, and that's going to get away busier. So, you know, it's, it's going to put huge pressure on, on people across the whole country. It's, it's just, I, I think, another sense of, 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 of particularly rural areas and more isolated areas being abandoned by corporate sector, by particularly the banking sector. Uh, we've seen not that long ago, I've seen beside me and Drumshamble, Bank of Ireland closed, Manor Hamilton, Bank of Ireland closed. Now we see that the AIB in Valnamore, which is beside me as well, is, is going cashless. That means that the ATM is going to be gone. The only other ATM in the town is in, in, in a shop which closes at a particular time in the evening. So if, if people want to go to take money out of an ATM, there isn't going to be one available. The post office is only open certain hours as well. You know, it, it's just, it's just a, a ridiculous situation that the banks can do this. The fact is, the state owns a big portion yeah. of AIB as well. And I think that the government should be bringing a bit of pressure to yield there for to ensure but, but, that, that they do actually provide a public service. Yeah. Because they, I know they're, they're, they're a business, but they have a, they have a responsibility to the public as well. To, because at the end of the day, the state and the taxpayer came to their rescue when they were needed. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's yeah, outrageous that, that they would carry on like this now. to haul in the head of the banks and different governors and whatnot uh, before Oireachtas committees. It won't make a blind bit of difference, though, will it? Well, They'll do what they want. I know that lots of people, including myself, would have been hoping that, that the Minister for uh, Finance would have been able to intervene in something like this. But sadly, the Department of Finance have issued a statement this morning to say that he cannot uh, interfere with their operations or strategic moves like this. And it is really disappointing, really disappointing. Well, I'll tell you what the Minister can do, uh, because he was quick enough uh, to make sure that salaries were capped after we spent two and a, 22 and a half billion euros bailing out the likes of AIB and, of course, the others. Uh, so we own it well enough for him to cap salaries, but not enough that he can actually uh, direct that some operations are preserved. Uh, and bear in mind, we still own over 60% of this bank as a taxpayer. Sure. Um, so I do think it is a little churlish not to intervene. Mm -hmm. And by the way, AIB didn't even put up a spokes for the media around this morning. So they're just going to let they, this they, storm they, roll over the and, and carry from on. The, the consumer's point of view, isn't it, Sinead, is that they can act that way with impunity because oh, what option do we have? Correct. And, and if there's nobody willing to kind of step in and say, uh, I mean, Pascal Donoghue is the key shareholder of this bank and remains so. So, you know, imagine a private business where one shareholder owned two thirds of the business and they said, look, we couldn't possibly step in and, and have a word with them and tell them what to do. Like, that's utter errant nonsense. Uh, of, of course, they can bring pressure to bear. They, the, the entire... Uh, various Oireachtas committees got together and, and called for the heads of insurance companies uh, to, late, too late, too little, to deal with motor insurance, to deal with price walking. Um, Central Bank regularly hauls in the heads of banks. So, you know, I do think there is a role here for, for government. Tom? Yeah. Moreover, there's, there's an issue that the, the Minister for Finance has done a banking review. Uh, he's just recently had a forum. He's brought all the stakeholders together. The issue of older people being left out was really a, a concern that came out of that. So, me, on one hand, he's, he's having these conversations. There's been a public consultation. Many people have written in. And AIB has jumped the gun by, by making this move towards the, the, everything being cashless. So, there is a role for the state to shape a banking system. And the post offices and the credit unions will have a role. They'll work for some people. But that's not a complete banking service. So it's entirely within the power of the, both the central bank as regulator mm. and the Minister for Finance to put shape on our banking system. We're down to just three banks. We and is your fear now that, 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 that where, where AIB go, the other banks will follow? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, 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 we're now, you know, it's, it's not far off half their branches have gone cashless. So, you know, how, where, how far does this go before, you know, you just can't get access to cash without paying fees every time you want to take out your money?